It's been 20 years since the Institute of Psychiatry joined King's College London, and I thought it was worth marking that. The idea for the Arts and Minds Festival began a year and a quarter ago. Since then, we've been gathering together artists, we've been commissioning works, putting out the word, and it seems that the idea has really taken on a life of its own. It's had momentum and it's grown tremendously, so it's been a great opportunity to, to meet new people and exchange new ideas. Where you're looking in the real world, and that's what we call them. The idea was to bring together the high quality research, the education that we do, to start exploring how that can be understood in an artistic context, in a creative context. Not just because I think uh, it's interesting to see how some of those scientific ideas can be understood and interpreted in artistic settings and by artists, but also I think because we believe that science is improved by the input of art. There are very few times when you're invited to kind of design a space, so today what we wanted to do is go for a walk with you guys and get your thoughts on how the spaces could be designed better. Basically we're going to graffiti the street with drawings and ideas respond to the spaces with some chalk. And what about the buildings? Could they be opened out so it makes it a larger footpath? Do you feel welcome here? And if not, what can we change? How would you feel in a place like this during the day? Feeling like you're welcome. Trusting the environment you're in is so important for us all to feel okay. Today I think was pretty successful in the way that we managed to encourage the participants to become very articulate and strategies like encouraging them to graffiti across the surface of the city allowed it to feel a bit more fun, a bit more naughty. You know, regardless of your age, you always want permission to, to play. Tonight we're having a speed dating event and the idea is that you try to talk to as many experts as possible. What I'm trying to explore tonight is one fun way, I hope, to really not just get artists and experts talking to each other, but to get the public involved as well. So we have young people tonight, um, they are 14 to 21 years old. Language is tricky and overrated, so we're going to use other means, we're going to use our bodies, we're going to use action. <laughs> what are you doing? I, I seem to find myself talking to quite a number of people that are always on the go. I've always been aware that the way my head works is not run of the mill. My mind races and I have lots of ideas at once. The opportunity this evening to meet a lot of other people and just chatting to them about how their thoughts work and how their mental processes work was really quite comforting. The net effect of that was like finding my community. I felt like I'd come home. Live. Ben. Today for the Arts in Mind Festival, we've been out here in Ruskin Park doing some mindful movement and some mindful explorations of nature. You don't need to be a PE teacher or a yoga guru. Movement practices are as effective as Prozac for mild to moderate depression. So there's a real need for integration here. And maybe the creative arts is one way that we can begin to integrate. Mind, body, movement, creativity, nature in a way that allows us to work holistically and integratively with people to help them be well. I'm really looking forward to the Belarus Free Theatre's um, dinner party provocation. The issue of refugees, of immigration, of moving communities is a really difficult issue and a really current one. Him and I just we are two refugees. I myself, I, I had really two a very really tough time. I, I've been to Calais for three months, you know, it was during the winter. It was really a very tough time there as well. I've met a lot of volunteers. I am really proud of some people I met and now they became my friends and all the time really just they are pushing forward, I mean for a positive path. I'm speaking with emotion and I'm, I'm really sorry, you know. <laughs> Each stitch ideally is the size of a grain of rice. I just periodically check in with the posture. We make that contact between the needle and the material, training in those regions of the brain for 
inhibition, self-control, pulling back. The critical training in mindfulness, how are we when things are not as we want them to be? My real passion for this work is uh, using arts to access the parts of mind that other therapies can't reach. It's great training for scientists actually, right, because we're very, you know, we're embedded in our work and we have very habitual ways of responding and this work is about saying, well, what else? I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it because it has no purpose actually, which is really nice. When, generally when I'm sewing something, I guess it's for a reason and it's very nice to be doing something that isn't for a reason. I'm making a film which is about a woman who starts to transform into a kind of grotesque creature. She thinks as a result of her experiencing the early menopause and she tries to hide what's happening to her but actually her body is constantly giving her away. What we're doing in the workshop today is giving everyone an opportunity to create photographs of situations in which their body gave them away. It may be your expression in, in different ways can, and the way you take the photograph could be enough or you might want to add in some prosthetic ideas. If you look on social media sites, you get these sites that list about 35 menopausal symptoms. It's become quite a popular thing and there's a bit of competition, I think, about who's got the worst. <laughs> in developing the film, I've been working with Christian Mallet, who's the special effects prosthetic designer who's working here. And the idea is to ultimately look at the fact that often we all have very similar experiences and we're all human dealing with these things. Let me just hear everybody hum very quietly this note. Maybe close your eyes. This evening was a little bit different from our previous experiments with this project in the sense that we were using VR. It was actually through this project I met the head of addictions, Professor Sir John Strang, and we actually came up with this and used Terry Riley as a starting point because he was obsessed with the effect of hallucinogenics. People shouldn't forget that there's a lot of creativity in science. It is about new ideas, it is about putting things together that haven't been put together before. A very chamber version of Terry Wright in C, but I thought it worked extremely well. It was great, it was challenging, but I was very pleased with what we <laughs> came up with in the end. Perhaps most importantly, we hope that the festival will enhance understanding of what it's like to live with mental illness. And through doing this, we hope to address some of the stigma that is associated with mental ill health in society today. I think the carpet, the tapestry that we have, that's brilliant. It's transformed the entrance area to the Institute and really brought ideas and art right to the heart of the life yeah, here. Actually, I took three months to make this drawing. It's about what's happening in my mind. We've worked with some of the local schools and I think that's really important because that's where our ideas come from and perhaps some of our misconceptions. It says be yourself. Getting people early and, and showing the breadth and depth of uh, psychology and psychiatry has got to be a good thing. We are located within diverse, thriving communities in one of the world's great cities and we've really tried hard to make sure that we can involve the local community and get the word out about this collaboration between arts and mental health. I enjoyed every minute of it. With all these lovely smiles and people about, how can it not be wonderful?